Put your down. Okay. Oh, she's all the way out there. Come on, girl. You got it. Right there. Come on, here's fella. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's too deep for everyone. It's too deep. Yeah, we got a bunch on the deck we gotta burn. Probably can collect some more stuff. There's a box there. I gotta go with those two boxes away. Okay. We're tackling some of our garbage today. We're burning the burn barrel. Yeah, so the move has gone great so far. We're both absolutely loving it here and we're just burning some things that you kind of accumulate when you move. We're burning those chicken boxes and there was just like a lot of garbage and stuff left here when we moved in that we're gonna take care of. It's pretty common in Alaska, I feel like when you move, some people just leave their stuff behind. It seems pretty common. <laughs> uh, so that was the case here. We've been here for about a week and a half, but I feel like it's really only been a week or so since we actually got the chickens and the cat. The cat is doing awesome and we've just been slowly but surely kind of like putting out small fires here and there and Whoa, that is ripping, huh? It's hot. That is like, my eyebrows are switching. All in all, it's been really nice to have the water. That has been amazing. And I think I kind of underestimated how nice it would be to have like a running toilet inside the house. I feel like that's just been, sorry, it's weird to say, but I feel like it's just really nice. Yeah, it's awesome. I actually, <laughs> honestly, I feel bad when I just like walk in our house and I just go to like you the bathroom guilty. and use the bathroom. I feel guilty. I, sh I feel like I should be like walking outside and going to the outhouse. Um, but I think definitely the highlight so far has been the running water. Another awesome thing was the shelter logic. It blew away and we tried to retrieve it and it just wasn't happening. And then we kind of replanned things. We came up with a new tactic and we went out there in the morning. And I think a big help was we kind of let the ground pack in where we were driving the snow machine. So it was no longer soft. It was nice and hard, almost icy. And then we hooked a big piece of wood behind the shelter logic. Instead of just pulling from two little poles, we we're pretty much pulling the whole entire roof. And it was actually pretty pleasant. Uh, we were able to retrieve it in about 20 minutes. We rolled it down our little hill. We were able to flip it back on its feet. Unfortunately, it suffered some major damage. So instead of it being a 20 foot long shelter logic, it is now a 16 foot long shelter logic but i've got all my stuff in there and all my tools and i'm really enjoying having it back yeah it's awesome uh it was getting beat up in that snow we've had a few snowstorms here oh, with wind and it was just getting thrashed so i'm really excited <laughs> that it's even still standing and usable surprising yeah that was our fault too the shelter logic when we came here we just like totally didn't really put anything down on it we know from our other place that they really need to be secured, but it was only like a week and a half period. We're like, it's not going to be windy. It'll be fine. Obviously Just, yeah. it wasn't. We've also had a little bit of chicken drama the first week that we settled in. Um, we have three roosters. We have our big rooster, Ruru, and then we had a rooster named Spaz. They were siblings and we've had them for like four years, three, three and a half to four years. And then this year we kept, actually it was last year, we kept another rooster who we've yet to kind of name and he's one of their offspring. He's an awesome rooster. We've been wanting to keep three, but it's just really hard to get the mix right with the personalities and all that. Chickens have a hierarchy. And when we move them here, we totally threw off their hierarchy. Uh, our main rooster, Ruru, was like psychologically damaged from the move. So he went way down the totem pole. And then our other rooster named Spaz, Spaz is actually short for Spaz, What's the word? Spazzy? Spastical? He's a spaz, yeah. He's a spaz. He's, He's a ninja. He's a crazy chicken. Um, he decided to be the dominant chicken and things were just not working out at all. He's way too aggressive of a rooster to the hens. He actually attacked our other rooster and we personally don't tolerate any fighting like that. It's just, we can't have that. That's just not a good environment for everyone. So what we tried to do is we tried to isolate the chickens and see if that helped. We had Ruru inside for a few days. We had spaz inside and it just 
didn't work out guys. So we had to take down Spaz. So he's no longer with us. Also happened to lose another chicken, just kind of coincidentally, next, she was egg bound. Night, yeah. yeah, she was egg bound. We've never had a chicken get egg bound and die from it. Um, and sadly, that's what happened to her. So we're down two chickens. Wasn't really expecting that. Not quite sure if we're gonna get more chickens, but we're um, we're kind of focusing on just getting them set up right now. This is a whole new place for them. And that shed is not really set up perfectly. So we're needing, we're just kind of slowly addressing that. Yeah, the shed is a big space for them. We're having to keep them locked in there a little bit more. They don't want to come outside as much. And when we left our other cabin, it was actually like getting into spring there. So it was getting really warm. And we had days that it was almost 40 degrees. And then we brought them here after they were getting used to the warm weather at the old place, it seems like the cold weather here, I mean, we've had like 10 below zero a lot. It kind of shocked them. Yep. So I felt like they were used to the warm. Now this cold was like really testing them. So we ended up hooking up my diesel heater outside and running a little bit of heat in there for them. It wasn't much, but we positioned it underneath their roost. So at night they were able to get like a little warmth and feel a little more pleasant. And it actually seemed to work pretty good for them. So now that the chickens are good today, we're just kind of dealing with uh, what needs to be done. There's a lot, a lot of things we still have to do. I know a lot of you have been wondering why we chose to move, uh, technically speaking, like still when it's winter here. And that was for two years. Summer in Alaska is very brief. It's three months. And I mean, it's still like there's frozen ground in June. So it's really not good building in June. And we didn't want to move up here in the summer and be taking care of all these things that we're dealing with now. So we wanted to get prepared, have our building materials ready, yep. things like that. And also there's really something like beneficial to living somewhere for a little bit and getting to see the land, getting to see the sun. Um, ideally, I would have been here like the whole winter looking at all that before we made these plans. but. We're excited to be here. We are, and we kind of have a tactic to our plan. So we're trying to do things that we can do while there's still snow on the ground. So Ariel said, like moving, and then uh, I think the next big project we're going to be tackling is kind of redoing the inside of that chicken coop. Okay, we're getting started on some bone broth for today, and I'm also going to be making some chicken feet broth or soup for the dogs. Uh, those are some feet that we got from someone who was processing chickens a while back so we're thankful to have that and these bones are beef bones and these were also a gift um, i'm very excited about these they are just cut up gorgeous beef bones so we're going to be making some lovely broth from that today eric moved over to the freezer the other day and it's awesome having it right here next to the house i'm also just going to be kind of pulling out some old vegetables we have at this point the vegetables are just aged a lot in the freezer and i don't really like eating them they're not my favorite thing to grab in the middle of summer so we're going to be utilizing them for the broth Check this out, this is a weight bearing bone, so it's huge. And it has been sliced by the butcher because I couldn't do that. Um, so that's gonna break down and be awesome broth. We've got Swiss chard, cauliflower, garlic scapes, and a few other little various vegetables. I'm gonna have Eric get these started so they can start breaking down. Last thing I'm adding is some of our onions that we had in storage. Just had a few left that uh, were still good. And then we have some of our pickled garlic and I'm gonna add the whole thing in there. This is awesome because you usually wanna add vinegar anyways to kind of help expedite the process and break the bones down. And this is gonna go probably all night. It takes a long time and what you get at the end turns out amazing. Well, we're gonna see if we can finish taking care of the brakes on the Tundra when we went and picked up our tractor down in Oregon a couple weeks ago, we had to change all the brakes in the AutoZone parking lot. Unfortunately, one of the rotors was really messed up and I couldn't get it off. So we ended up just sticking new brake pads on there. I bought new rotors. I got a bigger hammer. Let's see if we can get them off and get them changed.
those things are stubborn so this is not actually the one that we tried to get off the other day but this one i think is going to be just as hard to get off is that other one so this rotor i'm guessing was the original one and uh it looks pretty bad too so let's get a brand new one put on that's a nice one huh man if only it could have been that easy at the parking lot huh Awesome, so we got this one side on, and since I have one of the tires off and I'm gonna take the other one off, I'm gonna go ahead and switch all the tires over to our summer season tires. The snow's melting, the roads aren't very icy. It's a good time of year around here. Let's fire up the tractor and we'll go get the tires. Let's fire up the Branson. See those grooves? All right, that was the bad one. And a trick that I use, this was the other method I saw of getting these off, is there's some threads in there and you can push this bolt in with an impact wrench and it'll kind of push against the hub there and it'll pop it off. That's what did the trick. Let's get this other rotor on. All right, another thing we're doing today, we just took the trailer on a long road trip. So we put like over 6,000 miles on it on just one trip. So we're gonna grease the bearings and one of the bushings on it. This trailer is extremely easy to do. It has a uh, quick lube or an easy lube system. So you're gonna use a grease gun. We have one of these little bushings, pop it off here on each of the wheels. And you have a Zerk fitting in there. We're gonna put our gun on and just pump some grease in her. There's a lot of grease in there already. It looks really good. All right, that one is done. And there's one little bushing down the center in here we're gonna get, and then we'll get that back wheel. Oh my gosh, it's a workout. Well, we got a lot done today, but we did not finish up. I kind of opened up a can of worms on the black tundra. So I went to change the winter tires to the summer tires. I found out that the front brakes on this were pretty much shot too. So we did front brakes and we did new calipers because the calipers on this were like frozen up. They just weren't moving at all. So I thought we were all good to go. It turns out this truck on the front brakes, there's two different sizes. There's like a four and a half inch and there's a five and a half inch. I got the four and a half inch, not knowing there was two sizes. The auto parts store doesn't have the five and a half inch and that's the one I need. So unfortunately the Tundra is out of commission. We're gonna have to travel pretty far to get those parts. So I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do or when we're gonna get the parts, but the Tundra is gonna sit for a little while. It's getting late in the evening. We're gonna head inside. We're gonna get the generator fired up and we're gonna try something new over there tonight. So we're back at the back side of the cabin and this is where we've been running our generator. We don't have any batteries or solar power up here yet. So when we wanna have the power going in the house, we want running water, lights, things like that. We've been running the little Honda and this thing does pretty good on gas. I believe it has a one gallon tank and it'll last anywhere from like 
eight to 10 hours. So pretty good. And it's been warm out. So it's been running awesome for us, but we're gonna hook up something a little different today. And this is like an auxiliary tank that you could hook into this Honda. So you just put a ton of gas in this and this Honda will run for just like days. And I believe this is a six gallon tank. It's super easy to hook up. It's got a little hose and it's got a cap that's meant to fit these Honda generators. So let's take this one off. All right, I had to take apart this little cap because it wants to, it doesn't want to disconnect. But this is out. I took the little filter out. We're gonna connect this to the Honda. Now let's fill this bad boy up. So this little contraption we have here came with the cabin when we purchased it and it also came with a Honda generator. It's not this one, it's the other one we got inside, but it's called the Berg, B-E-R-G system. And I've never really heard of them before, but if this thing works, it should be pretty cool. It'll drastically improve our runtime. Holds five gallons exactly. Okay, let's fire her up. Well, it's been 16 hours and our broth is looking awesome. We had to take a little bit of a pause or put this on hold. We ended up taking like an impromptu trip back back home to our other cabin. Um, we were actually gonna go there pretty soon, but with the Tundra out of commission, uh, we needed to go a little bit sooner. So we decided to go back and pick up some parts. We ended up leaving at about 6 a.m. yesterday morning and came home at 1 a.m. So that wasn't really planned for. We were gonna spend the night, but when we got there, there was like a bunch of snow. And you know, kind of right now, things are a little tricky. Um, we're just trying to kind of figure things out as we go. Eric probably could have made that trip on his own, but I needed to check on our bees and they are doing exceptional. So that is awesome. In the future, maybe he'll just be the person to do the traveling so I can stay at home and keep an eye on things. We were also able to pick up some other stuff, which is just totally awesome. So I'm glad we're home, back home again, and we're picking back up with the broth. This is probably gonna need to go all day today, maybe even into the night. It takes a long time for those bones to break down. You can tell when the bone marrow actually starts to like, it'll fall out and then the bones themselves will get a little bit ashy. So we're that process is starting. You can definitely do this in a pressure canner. We've done it that way, but I just find myself going back to this method because it just makes like a richer stock at the end. The only thing is this outdoor burner is very hot. So I have to keep an eye on things. I actually moved our chicken feet to our inside oven to have it burn just a little bit slower. Okay, push. Let go. Push. Let go. All right, thank you, honey. This one's good to go. I gotta get the other side and we'll be done. Reminds you of uh, my grandpa, huh? Oh my gosh, I was literally gonna say it reminds me of this time when I was at my lunch break <laughs> when he was testing the Taurus. If I could shapeshift into anything today, can you guess what I would shapeshift into? A cocoon. A star. A star? So I could shine. Because you're, <laughs> you're, you're not burning too bright today. Yes. Yeah, this one was about to go. Oh too. no, what do you mean about to go? Does that mean they need to be replaced? It's full. Oh yeah, we still got plenty of. Uh, that one's getting us. Last another season? These actually aren't in that bad of shape. I'll get new, uh, this is called a drum. So this is drum brakes. These push out on there. These are called brake shoes. 
All right, the Tundra's just about ready to roll and I don't think she's gonna have a problem stopping. I am gonna pick up rear brake shoes and drums for this. So next time I go to put on my winter tires, we'll replace the rear brakes. And I also fixed up our little trailer. That thing we've had for 10 years. It's been a great trailer, but it has a major problem with wiring. Living up here in Alaska, the wiring seems to just like corrode and fall apart. So I found some uh, wires that broke apart. I got the trailer brakes working on it and the lights, always maintenance to be done around here. Still got some more cleaning up to do around here, but I wanted to show you some of the neat stuff that we picked up yesterday. We got our Polaris back. We've had it for a couple years and it has had a rough life. So we went to have it serviced and had some work done on it. So it's, it's in great shape now. We're excited to have it back. And we also picked up something that I am very thrilled about, a whole bunch of chicken food. So this may seem a little bit excessive, uh, I guess maybe it is. Eric and I are now a few hours out from where we get chicken food from and we wanted to have a really big supply. It's been, grain has been very difficult to get the last couple years and we got a hold of some. We got a hold of a bunch of the stuff that I use to make my own little mix and I'm super thrilled about it so I can start making that again for the chickens. I'm guessing we probably have over a year supply for them which is just totally awesome now that we have the space to store this food for them. I know one thing Eric's gonna work on today is probably expanding this area. He's been having some trouble with the limited amount of space to kind of turn the trailers around. So he's gonna get on the tractor and try to push some of this snow away. We're starting things off right this morning. A piece of toast with an egg in the middle. A little salt and pepper on top. This is actually one of my favorite breakfasts that Eric used to make when I did not like yolks or runny yolks. So he would put them in the oven and what is that called? Over hard? He would make them all the way hard through. Yeah. And so that was my favorite way to eat them, but uh, I'm an adult now, so we're eating them runny. <laughs> you, eat, you now eat runny eggs and not just chicken fingers. And the bonus is you get two little extra pieces of buttery toast the two eggs over easy and that's that pop the yolk use the toast oh it's so good didn't want to ruin anyone's appetite, so I wanted to wait to show you this. This is our rooster Spaz. This is his uh, saddle feathers and his crown feathers, or his cape, I guess you could call it. And we have cleaned the feathers and we have put some borax on them. So Spaz was a really gorgeous rooster. 
he had a really beautiful pattern. I was just counting the other day and we've had like 80 something Icelandics and we've never had another one with this exact same pattern. So I didn't want to compost his feathers by any means. I wanted to save them and maybe we will use them for something like maybe tying a fly. Eric's done this before with salt on a snowshoe here and it turned out great, but we were reading you want to use borax for chicken skin. I didn't mention this before, but Spaz, we have had him it would have been four years and about two weeks we got them all as chicks or we got 30 of them as chicks. He was actually a little bit sick or he did have a wheeze and we were thinking that we needed to kind of downsize our rooster. So unfortunately it was him, but we're gonna be able to make good use of his feathers. These are our limed eggs from over winter and we have quite a few left. We're gonna finish them off this morning by feeding the chickens didn't go through that many this year because we, the chickens were laying in January and we just haven't been feeding as many to the dogs. I actually have to rinse them all off first. Ooh, look at favorite for you. Scrambled eggs. Chickens love scrambled eggs. So they're all doing very well out here. We got rid of spaz. We miss them, but the coop is just awesome now. Everyone's kind of getting in the groove of everything and they're kind of acting like they did back at our old place, which is awesome. The chicken coop is not perfect. We've mentioned it has a lot of cracks and open areas. So there's like drafts coming through this thing like everywhere and it's weird. It's honestly colder inside the coop than it is outside of the coop. We have some plans, maybe like in the next week or two to kind of revamp the inside of this thing, make it a little better for the chickens. When we first got here and let them loose, there was some shelves in here. They were about a foot wide. There's also some like bookshelves. They were kind of trying to roost up high. The problem with the wide bookshelves was they were laying there, but they were also pooping there and the poop wasn't falling down because it was so wide. So they were kind of laying in their poop and it wasn't good. We took those down off both sides and we made them like a dedicated roost out of a one by four, which they prefer. It kind of flattens their feet out so they can keep their feet warm and then their poop can fall around. So they're all roosting up there. We still got a couple that are wanting to go up a little higher and stay on the shelves. As far as laying baskets, we don't have anything in here for them right now. We're going to build something, but we've just been putting like wooden eggs in the corners where we want them to lay. But they're also kind of laying in random places. So we'll have to come in here and kind of like find where they've been laying. The weather has started to change. So it's been heating up and we haven't had to heat it anymore with the little diesel heater, which is awesome. And also we've been leaving the coop door open during the day on these nice days when we're around and we can keep an eye on them. And the chickens go outside. They've got like a little dust bath there. There's a bunch of gravel showing now since the snow's melting. All in all, I think that these chickens are having a really good time here. Wait, they already finished that whole entire tray. That one right there, because that one with the cone, she was on the way. We still got the little lights going in here for them, and those only come on when we're home and the generator's running. And if those lights are not on, it's actually really dark in here. There's only one small little window in the door. So we're actually in the process of kind of coming up with a build list for this chicken coop. We've got some old windows we're gonna put in. We're gonna insulate it, paint. We're gonna do a bunch of cool things. We're gonna kind of do it in <laughs> stages. We're gonna kind of do it in stages though, because we can only- Who is that? Awesome. What is hey. she doing that? She was like going louder as you were So we're gonna do it in stages. We're gonna do what we can do right now while we still have a bunch of snow on the ground. It's mostly gonna be like interior chicken coop work. And then when the snow melts, we're gonna do more work to it. We're actually gonna move it like a few hundred yards away. We're gonna build an outdoor run. But I think uh, as soon as we get our list ready, we're gonna hook up the trailer and we're gonna head to Fairbanks and we're gonna be picking up a bunch of supplies. <laughs> That's the one that was wolfing it down. She's really excited. All right, we got one over here in this corner. For some reason, they really like this plastic bag. I don't know why. Okay, two eggs so far. What, is she okay? So that's why she got really loud? Yeah. 
Okay, we are getting started on our broth or canning our broth that we made. This has been, I think I finished it at the 22 hour mark and then I just had it outside overnight so it is chilled and solidified now. These are the bones that we ended up with. So you can see some of them are actually holy. They will kind of crumble. That's not a good example. Now I'm kind of cracked open. But then a lot of them actually still could go quite a bit longer. So especially these really, really big bones. But we called it quits. I strained it quite a few times. I made a lot of work for myself by adding all those vegetables. I had to strain those out probably at the 18 hour mark. And then I added, I kind of cleaned off the bones and added them back to the liquid and some more water. And let it go for a little bit longer. I'm gonna get this hot and we're gonna put it in some clean jars and then we are going to pressure can it. Oh, the water. Yeah, since the jars are gonna be so hot. It's because the pot is very cold. We were able to utilize that egg bound hen for some gorgeous chicken stock. So I'm also going to be canning that. Right, our broth turned out awesome. And we let these go for 25 minutes at 11 pounds. They're still really hot. This is the bone or the beef bone broth. And this turned out pretty cloudy because of all those other things that I added, but that's okay. It still has a really good flavor. And then the chicken broth is more of a pale, clear color with a bunch of glistening fat on top. We now have room for our chicken foot stock that we were making and i let this probably go for a similar amount of time it is all jelly now you can see i'll grab a spoon so that's what it looks like it's a, a little bit frozen at the bottom but it's very gelatinous it's definitely broken down enough i checked the bones yesterday and they are probably okay for the dogs to eat if they disintegrate if they're just like powder i can give them to the dogs otherwise i can pull them out and compost them that's what we're going to do with the other bones but this is a I know it's not very appetizing, but I know the dogs are going to think that it's uh, absolutely delicious. They love chicken feet. In the meantime, we've got all this going on. We are also making some buns for dinner tonight. What kind of sesame seed do you want to do on top? Normal? Okay, these are gonna be delicious. We are making buns because we are gonna have some epic stuffed moose burgers for dinner. Get your chicken foot in the soup. Well, we're making burgers and these aren't just any burgers. We have some moose meat that one of our friends gave us. This is two pounds of ground moose and we're gonna be making stuffed moose burgers and we're stuffing it with huge chunks of pepper jack cheese. And then we're gonna to be topping it with like uh, 
almost like an onion ring, but these are just little slices of onion and we're gonna soak them in this milk and egg and then we're gonna dredge them in flour and we're gonna fry them up. So first off, we are gonna stuff some burgers. All right, I want these like, like that, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's stuffed. Put this one. Well, that is huge. That's a big one. You're gonna have to make sure to mend him on the side. Okay, that is a stuffed like moose burger right there. Make it one. Yeah. You yeah. know what this reminds me of? That movie Good Burger. And they go to that place called Mondo Burger and they're like huge. Those, look at that, flour, salt and pepper. We've, this is gonna be good. That's perfect. Okay. Buns turned out awesome. Those are gonna be good with the burger. And instead of doing like traditional condiments, I figured we would try something different. So I have some garlic that we roasted for a very long time and olive oil. I'm gonna blend it with this hot pepper paste and that is going to be our sauce for the burger. Well guys, that has to be one of the most epic looking burgers I have ever laid my eyes on. We're gonna enjoy dinner and we pulled all of our trail camera chips today. So we're gonna take a look at them a little later this evening and see if we caught any critters. We will see you guys next time. I gotta dive in. It looks good. That's the best burger I've ever had in my life. Seriously though, you gotta try that.